Collins. Weekday afternoons from one on Talk Radio. Seven minutes after three o'clock. Now, Harry Miller, former police officer from Humberside, was investigated by the police over a poem that he posted on Twitter. A cohesion, a cohesion officer from that is a co- I slipped on the word because I have to remind myself that such a thing exists. A cohesion officer from Humberside Police telephoned Harry and told him while his tweets had not broken the law. He should not engage in political debate on Twitter. This call did not come from North Korea, but as I said, from Humberside. The officer cited 30 potentially offensive tweets, but the police have so far refused to identify the tweets they seem to deem offensive. Although no crime was committed, sharing the poem online was recorded as a hate incident. They're called non-crime hate incidents. If somebody had told you about these, like, you know, a few years ago, you'd have said, Get in the bin. That's clearly just rubbish. That's made up, right? So Charlie Brooker wrote that as a part of a theme for a TV show. This is real. Thankfully, I don't need to tell you any more of the story because Harry Miller is with us in the studio. How are you, Harry? I'm here in the flesh, mate, and I'm loving it. Loving, loving it. it. Not non-crime hate incidents. The very, the very term is absolute nonsense, isn't yeah. it? How can you have a non-crime hate incident? So in other words, it's just a incident. It's an incident. It's an incident. What has that got to do with the police? And of course, before I sort of discovered that I'd been saddled with one of these things, uh, nobody knew that we were that, that they were a thing. Mm. Because why would you? You couldn't imagine non-crime hate incidents. You simply couldn't. Uh, but they are. And there's uh, well, at the end of I think it was 2020, there were 140,000 of us with these non-crime hate incidents. Stand. So a few months later, there must be at least 200,000, maybe a, a quarter of a million with us. And what is so horrible about them is that they are attached to us as individuals. So, for instance, my record, and it's called a non-crime crime record, get your head around that, Mr. Yeah, Orwell. Yeah. <laughs> it names me as the offender for the offence of the crime non-crime of trans hate. I don't understand what any of that means. But what is terrible about this is that the College of Policing argued at the Court of Appeal as late as March of this year that because I have one of these non-crime hate incidents against my name, I should be barred from doing certain certain jobs. Really? So, my, yeah, my career path must, must necessarily be limited. So even though I myself am an ex-police officer, I could, not, I could not apply even to be so much as a special now because of my clear, obvious hatred towards the trans community. In fact, I couldn't even apply successfully to be a lollipop lady or a lollipop man. In fact, I probably could apply to be a lollipop lady because then I'd be a trans lollipop lady, wouldn't I? Yes. But, but I can't even, because they would be so afraid that if they gave me the lollipop, okay, and the white frock and, and the hat, that I might accidentally kick some trans child under a bus because I am that dangerous person who Because you're hateful. Yeah, because I'm a hateful, hateful person. And what's, he, what's even weirder is that the College of Policing guidelines define hate as, uh, as dislike, ill will, ill feeling like so if or, or, or simple mm. opposition to an idea so if i oppose the notion that trans women are actually women that that is interpreted as aggression and hostility and hate so we've got a whole sophistry going along here and the end result is that i'm not allowed to work with any organization that might employ trans people because the police will reveal it on an enhanced DBS check. That is terrifying. And despite the fact that in the real world you don't have a fateful bone in your body and you, you don't want to discriminate against anybody, no. somebody somewhere has decided that because of a poem that you wrote, therefore that makes you worthy write, of this status. I didn't write published. the poem. I didn't write it. I didn't write it. It wasn't. It was, it was. It was classed as a limerick. It wasn't a limerick. It was a piece of feminist doggerel that... One day I just happened to retweet. I couldn't remember doing it, but apparently I had. It was on my, you know, I'd done it. That's fine. Uh, and this was classed as being so terrible that without police intervention, now get this, without police intervention, I was on stage one of a five-step journey, which ends where? Guess where? Genocide. That was the argument made by the College of Policing, that because I'd tweeted... For instance, I, I I was assigned mammal at birth, but I identify as fish. 
a bit of, you know, yeah. just me being sarcastic. This was step one on a five step journey that ends in Auschwitz. Okay, but on wow. the on the way there, on the way there, of course, we have to go through the risk of me stabbing somebody because when we asked the police, why are you recording these non crime hate incidents? Yeah. They said in order to prevent escalation to crime. Okay, so what what crime do you have in mind? And the only crime they had in mind was the stabbing of Stephen Lawrence at the bus stop. And they used that. They used that. They stood. Well, firstly, yeah. how dare they use that? I mean, what's going on there? But what do they even mean by that analogy? Well, apart from anything else, it disrespects all black people. It disrespects Stephen Lawrence. Correct. It disrespects all of us because you cannot equate the murderous intent of a bunch of white racists who are intent on killing somebody on account of their colour with a simple sarcastic comment by me about a hot political topic that hot political topic was the proposed change to the gender recognition act and of course with any hot political topic yes it is ripe for satire that's what makes us british one of the things we love yep. is satire we have a rich history of satire and comedy and i was simply engaging in that and for the police to then equate that with a brutal murderous racist stabbing is utterly offensive but of course this is what the police do the mcpherson report told the police look at yourself and check out your that your attitude toward black people but rather than doing that what the police did they ref they deflected the criticism on them and told us to check our thinking literally because that's what the police officer said to me he said you haven't committed a crime but i need to check your thinking and that was where I went, I mean, oh, that's, hold on a minute, no. That's no, the you point, don't. isn't it, where you think, hang on a second, a copper has shown up at my house and told me to check my thinking. I mean, this doesn't get any more. All of those, you know, it's that phrase, you don't want to go there. You don't want to have to cite Orwell. You don't want to have to cite kind of dystopian films and ideas, but you're forced there, really. When somebody comes up to you and starts speaking in a, a kind of North Korean-type language, we need to check your thinking. Well, that's that's exactly what he said. We need, it's horrifying. We, yeah, we need to check your thinking because apparently thinking checking is a thing that the police are supposed to yeah. be. Involved. There's an interesting story today um, in, in, the, in the female by Jenny Murray. And of course, Jenny Murray was one of those people who inadvertently got me into trouble with the police because my, my son was at Oxford and he, he just texted me and said, hey, dad, uh, the people who were baying and screaming at, at Jenny Murray the other week, uh, they're all out again um uh, protesting steve bannon so i put that in a tweet that's all i put but because i didn't use the phrase the hateful transphobe jenny murray and just <laughs> simply called her jenny murray the police decided yes. that i was i was demonstrating hate and the kind of hate which without necessary intervention will end up in auschwitz that's the logic of the police i mean that is that's we're now in another time, I mean, as if you couldn't usurp the madness of check your thinking. The fact that you didn't accredit Jenny Murray with a description given to her by what some people would describe as an extreme, uh, rather troubling group of people. You didn't adopt their title, yeah. their idea of what Jenny Murray is. Yes. Because you didn't do that, then once again, Harry Miller, you're in trouble. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, with non-crime hate incidents, because it's perception based, there is no slicing of the sausage with any of this. If somebody perceives something to be hateful, it is hateful. That is it. Mm. There is no possibility of appeal. None. That's it. Even though I went all the way through the High Court, and even though Humberside police were likened to the Stasi, the Checker and the Gestapo, and even though the judge says there was not a cat in hell's chance of Harry Miller escalating to anything that was even remotely criminal, Humberside have decided that they have they have kept my non-crime hate incident on record, regardless, just, just regardless in case. of that, because they can simply well. because they can. Now, what was interesting is after I had um, after I beat. Uh, the chief constable of the Humberside, Lee Freeman, he kindly invited me over for coffee, which was very nice of him. And I said, look, I do kind of understand why an enthusi an over-enthusiastic young officer called PC Gull had tipped out of a course, because apparently he'd been on a course, um, and came and sort of, you know, evangelically tried to sort of check my thinking. I kind of get why he did that. But I said this, why, when I sort of resisted and it hit the international news, why did somebody up the chain of command not apply some common sense? 
and Chief Constable Lee Freeman looked me in the eye and said, Harry, you're an ex-police officer. You should know that common sense is not an appropriate tool for a police officer. <laughs> 